I guess one way to put it is that Jerry's been out shopping for the groceries and I get to put the, you know, take the recipe and put the soup together. But uh, uh, no, it's been very active, you know, off season. I think we, uh, people that have followed us, what's going on. Uh, you know, we, we made some decisions in organization at the end of the year. Uh, we probably need to go a different direction uh, where we're at and what we were doing. It wasn't allowing us to get over the hump, you know, and get into the playoffs. So, uh, you know, we've been aggressive. Uh, we've moved some really good players. Uh, we've got some really young, good young players come back in those deals. So uh, it's a transition time for us, but uh, it's, it's a point, and I thought we needed to, to make a move organizationally, and we did. Scott, you're off, you're on board. A lot of managers find this kind of step back difficult as compared to a team that won 89 games and playing for something right now. Absolutely, I'm on board. There's no question about it. I think when you, you talk about you know, the season we've, we had last year and good on what we've done the last three years, you know, I think we have the fifth best record you know, in the American League, but it hasn't been good enough. You know, we haven't been one of the best five teams in any season to get over the hump and, and get into the playoffs. And, and it's, it's about getting, getting into the playoffs, getting the World Series and winning it. And uh, we haven't been able to do that. So, you know, taking a step back, I'm fully on board and, you know, looking forward to the challenge. No, it's not. Certainly, we've given up some very good players, no doubt. And, and, and certainly, our pitching staff has been hit hard in the middle of our lineup uh, and the guys we moved on. But, uh, you know, looking at, at if we were to line up today with this club, you know, I, I like our lineup. It's certainly maybe not as potent as it was last year at this time, but uh, we're not done in the offseason yet. But again, I think we're looking, you know, long term here. Uh, what's best for the organization and how do we put ourselves in that upper echelon? You know, uh, you look at the, the American League right now and, you know, what, what the Red Sox are able to do. We, we see Houston a lot, uh, where the Yankees are at, what Oakland's done. I mean, just some good teams. Um, you know, so us taking a step back hopefully allows us to, to catch up and, and get above those teams in another year or so. How player development background allows this transition, step back, and take a step forward, or two steps forward, makes it a lot more digestible for you, certainly because you've been on that end of things? Uh, no doubt. And I've gone something through something similar to this, you know, my days back in Texas, uh, where we were kind of floundering, didn't know where we were going to go and made a big trade, kind of timed that up with uh, very good draft choices and, you know, bringing in Latin players, uh, kind of supplementing the system and creating a lot of, you know, very desirable young players and then allowing them to grow together. So uh, seeing how that can all come together and how fun that is to be a part of something like that, it, it excites me. Not going to be easy understand that there's going to be some growing pains you know with some younger players less experienced guys but you know it's a challenge we're willing to take on um you know i've been in the game a long time uh, so i think by 31 years uh, as a player and in the front office working with players doing a number of different things and you know my name means a ton to me and the relationships you build uh, you know and I think that's all that really needs to be said at this point uh, you know MLB is doing an investigation uh, on some of the things that, that were brought out and feel very confident the truth will come out uh, the focus right now is getting ready for 2019 you know that that's where we're spending our time and energy towards and that's where I'm looking forward to Oh, very, very surprising, uh, no question. But again, knowing uh, what my background in the game, you know, as a player uh, for a long time, um, some of the, the guys I've played with uh, and their background and where they're coming from, then going into, you know, the scouting part of things and then player development, you know, probably made 35 to 40 visits to the Dominican Republic, helped put Academy together down there. Um, I think the people that know me, know Scott Service and how I'm wired, you know, understand you know, uh, what's important to me and understand the, the, uh, what players come from and trying to help them get over the hump. That's what it's about, you know, how to have, uh, be productive major league players, uh, be good citizens, good people. It's something I take a lot of pride in. Uh, 
I, it helps me a lot. You know, I, like I said, I've spent a lot of time down there, but you know, our focus right now needs to be on 2019, uh, and we'll let MLB take care of some of the other stuff. Well, I'm, I'm excited for, for Manny to get the opportunity to interview uh, with the Orioles. Certainly he's managed before uh, in the big leagues. He'd like to get a shot at doing it again. Have to see how it plays out. Uh, again, for all of our guys, you know, coaching staff uh, especially, you want those guys to you know, get opportunities, and I'm excited. Hopefully he will get the opportunity. I hear rumors that you know, they're close to making the decision, so hopefully he's in the mix there. Uh, I hate to lose him because he meant a lot to me uh, and our team, entire coaching staff. But, again, I want what's best for Manny. There, there is, yeah. We, we made some changes. Certainly, uh, the pitching coach uh, Paul Davis comes on board uh, on the hitting side. We, we've hired Tim Laker uh, to come in. So, uh, you know, not just our team, many, many teams, <laughs> coaching staffs, uh, guys get opportunities elsewhere. Uh, you know, it doesn't work out for them in a particular spot. But uh, we're kind of out ahead of it. You know, had a number of meetings uh, with our guys, kind of making sure everybody's on the same page. As you go through the interview process, you learn so much. Uh, different ways of doing it, different ways of connecting with players, how to get the most out of guys, and it's been a good process for us. Are you going to approach the clubhouse any different? I mean, there's so many new guys coming in. There are a lot of younger guys. Does that change your approach at all? Uh, it does, no doubt. I, I think, you know, we do have new new bodies coming in, people that have not had the Mariner uniform on. So, you know, kind of a, uh, getting those guys to understand what we're about, how we go about our business. I have to be myself. Uh, and that doesn't really change if you know, you've got veteran players or younger players, but you've got to be a little bit more patient uh, and, and more educating, uh, I guess, as much uh, as anything, under, letting guys understand why we do what we do and, and showing them you know, how we can help them get the most out of themselves uh, to help us win a few more games. Uh, no doubt, and, and I have. Uh, I've talked to a lot of our guys, uh, you know, D. Gordon frequently. Uh, it's just D's personality. He's going to check in every three or four days, uh, you know, talking to Mitch, to Marco, uh, a number of guys. Again, you know, obviously Kyle and, and Felix are the two guys that are still on our roster um, from when we originally were here. Um, so uh, I think trying to get everybody to understand where we're headed and why we're headed there, you know, that's part of the job. And you've got to be honest with people and let them know what the expectations are, and, and we'll do that going into camp. Be a very competitive team in 2019. I'm the manager of the club. I want to win every game we can. But understand that from a bigger picture standpoint where the organization's at, I want to do whatever I can to help us move this thing in the right direction. It's to get into the playoffs and win the World Series. It's not to come in sixth or seventh or eighth place. Uh, and sometimes it takes time. You need to take a step back once in a while to ultimately get where you want to go. You know, uh, Felix has gone through a lot, you know, the last three years uh, since, since we've been here. I haven't really seen the, you know, the vintage Felix Hernandez that everybody uh, has known about for a number of different reasons. There's been some injuries. There's been, you know, lack of focus or, or you know, just not producing like we've seen uh, in the past. It's a big year for Felix. He's going to get the ball. He's going to be in our rotation. Uh, I think everybody's aware it's his contract year. And uh, I do know one thing about Felix. He's really, really competitive. Uh, he'll be ready to go, and we'll give him an opportunity to go out there. I'm excited. I remember when JP uh, came out in the draft. I was a little bit more involved on the amateur side and looking at players and understanding kind of how he's progressed through the minor leagues. And like a lot of young players, you get to the big leagues, it's not instant success all the time. There's a little bit of a learning curve there. But uh, I know our people that were involved in the front office, our scouts that have seen him play recently, really like the player. Uh, I've had a chance to talk with him, see where he's at in his career. Um, I'm excited to have him. Uh, he's young. There's room for growth. Uh, but we have to be patient. You know, there's going to be some, you know, there'll be some struggles with the bat once in a while, struggle in the field. But, uh, you know, with young players, you got to give them opportunity. you got to support them, pat them on the back, and, and keep them going. So uh, I think it's a really nice pickup for us you know, moving forward and be a big part of what we're trying to do here.
Yeah, no, like I said, we, we traded some very good players and guys that you build relationships with over a while. Uh, probably as close to Mike as any of the players that we traded. Um, and I do think, you know, he's got plenty of good baseball ahead of him. Uh, you know, on the flip side, we, we bring in Omar, uh, young player, controls the strike zone, left-handed hitter. Uh, he's got things to work on, you know, defensively that we've already talked about with him. So trying to get him you know, up and going um, and, and getting improving on the receiving and the defensive part of things as quick as we can. But again, uh, young player, uh, I know he's a Venezuelan guy, but he's down in Miami right now. His wife's due any day with their first uh, child. So uh, he's excited uh, to get on board and hopefully everything goes okay with that, the birth of the child. Good question, Corey. I think, you know, Marco, when we acquired him, understanding where he was at coming off, you know, Tommy John's surgery and struggled a little bit in that first, you know, month, month and a half, we, we pitched him in the big leagues. But then last year, coming into camp without an excellent spring training, once the season got going, you know, he had kind of struggled getting over the hump the third time through the lineup. You know, and there were some times I probably pulled him a little too early. Um, he certainly got the message, and, and I think he took it and he ran with it. As, as he got on a nice roll through May and June, um, very consistent. Uh, getting deeper in the ball games, getting through the lineup for the third time, uh, really, you know, the, using all of his pitches. A uh, big weapon for him last year was getting his cutter back into play to both sides of the plate. Uh, he'd always had a very good fastball changeup, but even the curveball. So having all four pitches, you could really see the confidence grow. And especially, like I said, you know, you get in that fourth, fifth inning, that lineup's coming around the third time. It was almost like he saw it coming, and he's like, here we go, and, and push the gas down and really get after it. So uh, really a... Uh, kind of a step out year uh, for him, which was great to see. And a big part of our success last year was driven by our starting pitching, and he was a big part of it. You lost the best closer in the game. Yes, we did. The last season. How, how are you going to approach your closer's role? Have you thought about that at all? Uh, I, I haven't. I, I think like, we've got work to do left in the offseason as far as bringing in some bullpen pieces. Not only would we lose Eddie, but you know, Colomay, Nicasio, uh, Pazos is out of that mix. And the back end of our bullpen was outstanding last year. Uh, and it's really, it allowed us to win as many close as one run games as we did. Um, Eddie Diaz is a tremendous talent. You, you hate to see him go, but it's, it's a business. It, it's part of it. Um, you know, we're trying to, to reload a little bit and, you know, you got to give up good players to, to get them. So uh, we haven't really looked at, you know, how the closing thing's going to work out or anything like that. Again, our off season's not done yet. Well, I think, like I said, we're going through a transition right now. Uh, I know when, when Jerry got the job and I came on board here, you know, our core was pretty much defined who it was um, based on, you know, their contract situation and the commitments that the organization had to certain players. And what we tried to do was supplement that group. And it was with D. Gordons and, and a number of guys that we brought in to kind of help get that group into the playoffs. It didn't happen. Okay, so now, you know, pulling back, you know, the type of players we've acquired, they're certainly younger. Okay, and in times they're, they're more athletic. Uh, you know, we have control of those players, and it helps you build and gives you a lot of flexibility in building your roster. So, you know, the type of player that, that we desire, there's a certain style of baseball we want to play. Uh, and it's certainly, you know, we want to control the strike zone. You've heard us talk about it a lot. You know, what is that? It, it happens on the, on the mound. It also happens in the batter's box. And, and controlling the strike zone is where the, it's where the game is won. So uh, some of the guys we've brought in do that very well. Uh, some younger guys need to continue to work on that as part of their game. But the athleticism, uh, kind of the young, the high energy type player we like. I think they're fun to watch uh, because they are young and inexperienced. We have to be patient with it. Yeah, and that's, that's what we will be this year. Oh, Mike's outstanding uh, person. You know, I speak to that first. I think his work ethic, um, you know, behind the plate. Uh, the time he puts in in the game preparation and trying to get the most out of a pitching staff, really good. Uh, you know, tremendous. I'd put him at the top of the top of the list of young players that I've been around. He's not that young anymore. He's starting to move up in experience. But uh, uh, receiving is very good, uh, accurate throwing arm. Uh, defensively, there's not much he can't do. Uh, certainly offensively, we've seen the, the highs and the lows of Mike. Uh, the power is real. I can hit it out at any part of the ballpark. 
Uh, you know, the strikeouts are another part of his game. And that's just part of, you know, the fans that have watched Mike play. That's just part of what you're going to get with Mike. But uh, tremendous person, um, really good competitor, uh, and he wants to win. Uh, I, I say all that. We got a really good player back. And we start talking about Malik Smith and what he brings and, and his personality and excitement. If any of you had to listen to the, one of the interviews he did about seven or eight days ago in Seattle, you'd understand what I'm talking about. But there's a lot of personality there. And, and I'm excited to have Malik on board as well. We'll find out. You know, I, I, uh, Vogie's always had track record of hitting, certainly at the minor league level. Hasn't really been given a full season to see how it played out at the big league level. Um, you know, this could be the year he gets it. Again, our offseason is not done yet, so we have to wait and see, see how it plays out. But uh, uh, I like Vogie. I think uh, he's really good in the clubhouse. Uh, he continues to work, you know, at his game. I think we've seen improvements defensively, um, and that's a credit to him. But it's about the bat. You know, with Vogie. So right now, is he going to get 400 at bat? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what the roster looks like. Well, I think the, the shift, and you see a lot of coaching, um, you know, movement this year. I think that the shift is it's about, you know, uh, people that can come in and, and, and connect and really teach. You know, and it is driven some of it by the technology, uh, whether it's 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 TrackMan, it's Rapsodo, it's the different tools that we have out there to help in player development. So, a lot of the people that are getting hired are, are very savvy. They understand how to use the tools, and it's evidence-based coaching. They have real evidence tied to numbers that can help the player. And a number of teams have gone that direction. You know, we're one of them. Uh, there's no question about that. I think it's a good thing. Uh, players nowadays a little bit different than when I played. Uh, they'll ask why often. And it's not just because I told you so or this is the way I did it. They want real data and numbers behind it, the evidence. And that's what these people are able to bring to the table. So um, it's really um, changing the game, I think, in, in, in a good way, in, in the fact that there's real data behind it to understand why this is happening and, or why it's not happening for particular players. That's why you're seeing the change. I don't, I don't know if they're that. They've just been exposed to it more. And, and a lot of them are coming from, you know, some guys coming from the college level, coming from the private sector. And we've hired a number of those people, not just in player development, but around our big league club. And they bring a skill set. Uh, they're just more familiar with the technologies. It doesn't mean that other guys can't catch up. I'm catching up. You know, it continues to change daily. Uh, we've really seen a change probably in the last year and a half or two years. You saw it coming into the minor leagues and player development. You're now seeing it, you know, matriculate into the big leagues. It is a little bit more challenging. Um, I'm actually looking forward to the Japan trip. I think it's going to be awesome. Uh, I think where we're at as, a, as an organization, as a ball club, we have so many new people. Sometimes when you take a trip like that, the, the team bonding really happens quicker. You don't have to wait to get into the season. You've already kind of done something, even though those games, those two games are real season, regular season games. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. On the evaluation side of spring training and breaking out your club, it, it is a little bit more challenging. Uh, we'll start spring training three or four days ahead of time, uh, get our pitchers ramped up. But that's the, the big thing. That's why we're there for spring training is to get those pitchers, uh, their pitch count built up. That'll be a little bit more challenging as you've got, you know, mid -mar late to March games, you know, in Japan. Our pitchers may not be at the 90 to 100 pitch level yet. That's probably the most challenging part of it. Yeah, I think it'll help D a lot. Uh, you know, just coming in and knowing he's going to be at one spot. I give D a ton of credit. You know, he came in with an open mind, uh, worked his tail off and tried to, you know, give center field a, a really good shot because he knew it was what's best for the team. That's why we acquired him. Uh, you know, obviously we had to make the change, you know, early in the season with, with Cano being out. But uh, D handled it great, uh, you know, going back in the second. But then at the end of the year, when we started to flip him back and forth. That's hard. It's hard for any player, especially when he's had the success he's had at second base. But, you know, he was willing to do it for the betterment of the team. Uh, but I think he's excited just to go back, going into camp, knowing where he's going to play, and you know, hopefully get back to being a typical D. Gordon season. What do you, what on earth do you guys talk about three, four times a week? 
Uh, it's D. It's it's last night he FaceTime me. I don't think he knew I was in the the room here at the winter meetings, but uh, he just moved into his new house and wanted me to see his big screen TV and everything else. So uh, it's D. Uh, he's always got something going. I love the energy. Uh, I think between he. Uh, what Malik Smith brings to the, the mix, uh, we'll have a lively clubhouse, it's no doubt. I do. I, I think D has talked about that and he wants to be more involved. Uh, you know, taking some of the young guys under his wing, so to speak. And he actually called me one night, and this is early in the offseason. We had just, I think, made the Paxton and Zanino trades. And he says, uh, Skip, looks like we're going younger. And I said, very perceptive, D. You're on it, you know? So uh, uh, he said, well, you know, maybe we should take a few of these young guys under our wing. I was like, be a mentor? He's like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. So he gets it. He, he's on it. And certainly all players that have been in the league for a while, they had people to help them along early in their career. And I think it's important that, you know, the veteran players understand where they're at and to give back a little bit. And I think when you give a little bit more, it's amazing how much you get. And D understands that. Kikuchi, you're talking about. Yes. The lefty, yes. Uh, I've only seen him on video, obviously. Um, I know it's, it's a, a very uh, interesting pitcher uh, that's probably going to do pretty well uh, when he gets over here with the big league club. Uh, we have interest in him like many other teams do uh, as well, but we just have to wait and see how that process works out. I'd love to have him, you know, no doubt, uh, but again, it's, it's contracts and length and terms and all that other stuff, so I'll have to wait and see, but very talented pitcher. Uh, I know a lot about Jared Kalanick. I know where he's from. Uh, he's from where I'm from. No, I, he grew up in, in Wisconsin, as did I. I uh, had a chance to, to meet with Jared before the draft. It was a th thought that he might slip to our spot in the draft. I'm not sure. We were in the middle of the first round somewhere was our pick. Um, so we, we had him in for a, a workout. I had a chance to sit and visit with him for about 40 to 50 minutes in my office early one Saturday morning, and then I had a chance to watch him work out. Very impressive. Um, he stood out. I've seen a lot of young uh, players before the draft, and he handled it great. Uh, I was hoping that he might fall to us in the draft. It didn't happen. But, you know, you, you make a connection with a young player, you follow him, and then, you know, lo and behold, we're able to uh, bring him back in the, in the Cano and, and Diaz trade. So uh, I think he's a tremendous talent. Uh, again, a player with a lot of upside. Uh, he has a chance to be a star in the game. He really does. It's a left-handed bat. He runs. He's in center field. He likes to play. He's got some edge to him, and he wants to be really great. Not just good, he wants to be great. Um, so we'll see how it plays out. Again, young player. He's probably going to play an A-ball this year, but certainly you got to keep your eye on. He is a Packers fan, yes. <laughs> well, hold on a second. Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, we saw him last year, too. He's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, obviously he's a very talented player. And, and um, you know, a year ago, I think he, he just kind of announced he was headed over to Anaheim. And getting a chance to meet him as he kind of went through the recruitment process uh, was interesting. Uh, it was quite an experience. Uh, unfortunately, when we didn't get him, you know, you're going to have to line up against him, especially in our division. So, uh, you know, he did have a very good year. Uh, we saw him pitch, saw him hit a lot. Uh, we did okay against him. He certainly got you know a handful of hits against us. Very talented guy, a lot of power. He's just going to continue to get better and better. Uh, there's no question about that. But uh, you know, one of the rising young stars in our game. There's no question. So you mentioned Caleb Coward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've known Caleb for a long time. Uh, when I was working with Anaheim, he had just been taken. He was in the system. Kind of see him kind of move along. Uh, through the different levels. And he's had his struggles offensively. Um, the one thing he always had in his pocket was a very good arm, and he was a heck of a high school pitcher. I know there were some teams that were looking at drafting him as a pitcher. So uh, when we made the decision to, to claim him and bring him in and kind of take a look at it on the mound, why not? You know, uh, very good athlete, um, and he's always had a great arm. So from what I understand, we're going to give him the opportunity to do both. Uh, we'll take a look at it and see how it plays out. Uh, 
Oh, we could. We did it last year uh, a few times. We certainly didn't do it as much as Tampa did and some of the other teams. But um, it is something that, you know, depending on how your roster is made up, it certainly makes a ton of sense. Um, trying to put guys in the best position to have success and sometimes using them in shorter stints so they don't get exposed. Getting through that lineup two or three times is a big part of the game right now. It's definitely something we would look at. You can't deny the success. Uh, I give those managers a ton of credit. I know what goes into planning that out and how you're going to use the bullpen and, and you know trying to keep guys fresh and make it work. Uh, I thought Tampa did a great job with it. They also had the Cy Young Award winner on that staff, which helps. <laughs> you know, so uh, you know there's a lot of thought and it's a it's an organizational type. You have your analytical people involved. You have your advanced scouts involved. Certainly coaching staff, uh, everybody in the front office, and everybody has to buy into it. But there's a lot of value in it. Yeah, Felix made one outing out of the bullpen, and he ended up going about five and a third or something that day and threw well. So uh, right now, Felix will be in our rotation. Uh, you know, I, I think doing it a certain way, he's done it his whole career as far as the routine of warming up and getting loose and getting ready in the game. And, uh, you know, but we'll, we'll stick with that with Felix for right now. Could change, but right now he'll be in our rotation. And we'll give him a ball. Felix is going to want to start, you know, and, and I think most of the guys that have gone through that and had the career he's had, are, you know, uh, pretty good idea. He's going to want to stay in the rotation and go that way, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. You know, I, I do think Kyle will have a better year. Uh, Kyle was very frustrated last year, no question. He's had pretty good run of success uh, in the big leagues. The last, you know, year and a half or two have been a struggle for him. Um, he is training differently this offseason. Um, try to get uh, a little bit more flexibility, a little looseness back to his game. Um, certainly he's one of the guys that is affected by the shift as much as anybody in the big leagues. Um, don't want to get away from what Kyle does really well. And when Kyle's going well, he is pulling the ball, and he's pulling it in the air. And a lot of times it's going out of the ballpark. So you have to understand what your strengths are and not get too far away from that. But uh, I do think Kyle will have a bounce back here. Uh, I really do. He's got a ton of pride. Uh, he's working his tail off this offseason. Uh, be back and be back an in, uh, integral part of that middle of the lineup for us. He's just trying to get his body in better positions is what he's trying to do. And again, all players go through that in their career. As you get a little bit older, you know, it's maybe not as easy as it was when you got into the big leagues at 25, 26, 27. And, you know, it's, I think the players that have had, you know, very consistent throughout their career and have been in the league a long time, they do change their routines, and he's making a little bit of adjustment there.